One of the things great companies are very good at is retention. Retention. How do you retain? How do you keep your best people to not want to leave you? And, and Steve Jobs said everything's about vision. And Tony Shea from Zappos said everything's about culture, right? So, you know, if you have vision, people are going to stay with you forever. And then Tony Shea would say it's about culture because people want to have fun and all this other stuff. And I think if you really think about the great companies like Walt Disney, uh, you think about vision and culture. If you think about companies like Apple, you think about vision and culture. When you think about Google, you think about vision and culture. When you think about Amazon, it's a vision and culture. Where are we going? And this is our culture. And uh, it's very, very critical on being able to make a great environment where you're working out that people want to come and belong to and they, they want to buy into it long term. But they also want to have a blast while they're working there. So today we're going to talk about mainly culture. And before I get into this message, it's going to be... Let me see how many points this is. It is going to be 25 points I'll cover uh, on uh, uh, creating a great culture at your company. But I am wearing a Cyberdust shirt. You know, most people tell you to practice safe sex. Uh, safe sex? They say practice yeah, safe sex, right? I, I believe in practice and safe texting. This is why I use Cyberdust. This is love to our friend, uh, our buddy, Mark Cuban. Mark, this is dedicated to you. Cindy, thanks for the shirt. Uh, love the shirt and love using Cyberdust. Anyways, that's the plug for Cyberdust. Let me get right into it. So how do you create a great environment for a company? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make the points and give stories as well so you know how to do it for yourself. This is stuff that you can do for your business yourself. Point number one, okay, create a great culture where, uh, 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 create a culture where feedback is open at your place. You want to hear feedback, right? Uh, not arrogance, pure feedback. Okay, have we thought about doing this? What if we can do this? What if we can do that? And a, a, a type of environment where people want to give their opinions, people want to give their ideas, people want to you know, share with you on what they're doing that's working for them, but also a, a place where everything is about what can we do to improve as a team? What can we do to do this better? How can we make this thing better? How can we make the system better? How can we make this website better? How can we make... Everything's about something being better because everybody's got their eyeballs on something, on saying, hey, I thought about this one thing we do. If we do this, 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 could this make it better? Possibly. What if it does, right? So it's a culture of constantly thinking about making things better too. Pranks. I'm big on pranks. Uh, uh, ever since being a kid, I loved pranks. Uh, and yes, I said prank, like P-R-A-N-K, pranks pranks. When I was in the military, when I was a kid, I pulled pranks on people all the time. My friends would tell you what kind of pranks I pulled. Some of them are pretty bad pranks. Uh, if you remember uh, Frank Rizzo and, and what, was the, what was that movie? It was called Jerky Boys or something like that where those guys would pull pranks on people. It was hilarious. And then uh, uh, we pulled pranks in school. I put pranks on my teachers. I put pranks on my parents, pranks on my aunties. You know, my, one of my aunties didn't like, uh, uh, I haven't told you this story. She didn't like worms. She couldn't stand worms. So I would you know, eat gummy bears and tell her, you know, you want to eat a worm and I would eat a worm and she would just be completely disgusted by it. I would come in, I would say, hey, did you hear about what happened? Uh, and she said, what? I said, you will not believe who married who. Who married who? Mike Tyson and Madonna are getting married. No way. They just got married today. Mike Tyson and Madonna. No. And then my auntie would flip out calling everybody and relatives saying, did you hear Mike Tyson married Madonna? Um, but I'm big on pranks. Military, we did a lot of pranks. Work, we did a lot of pranks. Mario is epic when it comes on to pulling pranks. Mario one time pulled a prank on uh, one of our branch managers, Chad, and he brought a paper that was FedExed in, and he put the envelope in there as if it's coming from FedEx, and in the FedEx, it's a letter with the same company letterhead uh, saying the following five agents have been terminated according to IRS uh, SEC code, 530i, which is 530i is a BMW. So he puts IRS SEC code 530i. And uh, as he's given this to the branch manager, Chad, he puts a camera on the side to record the whole thing. This is hilarious. He puts a camera and says, hey, Chad, we got this from FedEx. Uh, I just wanted to give it to you first. And Chad stays, and Mario stands right in front of him. And Chad opens it and he says, what? Why did it get terminated according to IRS SEC code 530i? I've never heard of this before. Oh my, and he starts panicking. And it says, call this number. So he calls this number furious. I need to talk to your manager. I just got a letter here that such and such and such and such agent are getting terminated because of the IRS SEC code 530i. How is that possible? Furious. This whole thing's on video. And uh, the gentleman on the phone says, let me place you on hold. So he places him on hold. Seven minutes he's on hold. Seven minutes they come back later. He says, look, 
you put me on hold. I need to speak to your manager why the following agents got the SEC IRS code 530 out that they're getting terminated. How is that possible? We run a very compliant business here. And the guy says, uh, sir, do you know where you called? Yes, I do know where I called. This is Hooters. And he says, where? This is Hooters, Atlanta, Georgia. He says, Hooters? He says, yes. He looks at Mario. Mario's in tears, cracking up, trying to hold himself. Camera's right there. Everybody's cracking. It was one of the most incredible pranks that uh, Mario pulled on one of our guys. And then these guys come in. When you, anytime you create a culture of pranks, you got to know it's going to come back on you as well. These guys pulled a prank on me one time. Uh, set up the whole thing with cameras everywhere in my office. I sat in the chair and made the sound of a loud, loud honk horn. But you know, pranks loosens people up. You know, in the world of sports, they say play loose because when you play loose, you're playing the game you love. When you play tight, you throw an interception. When you play tight, you get a turnover. When you play tight, you don't swing well, you strike out. When you play tight, you don't make the right uh, you know, uh, tackles. When you play tight, you just, you're not able to play well. Pranks tend to lose some people up uh, when you have that going on in your environment. And I know this sounds very, very uh, different to some of you that are watching the same. Well, you got to be very, very serious. If you want to be like IBM and get your butt whooped by Apple, you be a you know guy like in a box that everything is about this is how we do it because this is how we... No, you got to loosen it up a little bit and change if you want to adjust. Point number three, competition. I am very big on creating a competitive environment. And I know they're almost like contradictory, but let me explain to you what I mean by competition. I had a friend of mine in the Army, uh, Bradford, and he and I, and another guy named Larry McElroy, good buddy of mine. He's now, I don't know where he's living at now, but I love these guys. These guys are good buddies of mine until today. We, we regularly communicate. So we were very competitive, and everything to us was competition, everything. So we would talk about, you know, who can do the most push-ups, who can do the most, who can do the, and it was always competing. Who can bench the most, who can curl the most? who can run the most. Everything was a spirit of competition. Now, there's a lot of people, you got to realize this, lots of journalists, lots of magazines, lots of public publications cannot stand when I talk about competition because to them it's competition is very bad because you shouldn't beat people. Well, then you shouldn't watch sports because in sports somebody beats somebody. You should stop watching boxing, USFC, baseball, basketball, hockey, Olympics. Stop watching Olympics. Stop watching soccer, World Cup. You know why billions of people around the world watch the Olympics and soccer? Because of competition. That's why. Because the best performers in the world come and beat another record. So anybody who tells you they don't like competition, ask them if they like sports. You'll see how much contradiction they have in their lives. The only reason many people don't like competition is because they've lost a couple times very bad and they were humiliated. And that feeling stings here and they don't want to do something about it. I love competition. I've got my, my butt whooped so many times it's not even funny. But I'm all about competition. We'll do a competition and say who can do the most push-ups. We'll do it right here. We'll do the competition and say who can come out with the best ideas. We'll do a competition and say who can do the, Everything's about competition. Matter of fact, I just put a recent competition together on uh, uh, who can make what? Who can make the... Best cubicle thing. Who can decorate their cubicles the best at the home office staff, right? And they can do whatever they want. And first place gets a $250 gift card to, what did I say, Amazon or something like whatever that, right? Yeah. Whatever they want. So he want, your, yours is going to be around what thing? You said Led Zeppelin. Led Zeppelin. Zeppelin. He's a big Led Zeppelin, heavy metal guy. So we'll see. Maybe you're going to show it on next episode, yeah, how it's going to look yeah. like. And they have 30 days to fix their place up. I love it. Go fix it up. Make it look good on how you want to do it. One time I remember, uh, uh, and I love this because the more people are seeing a competitive environment, you're always going to get a better idea. Everything's going to improve and constantly get better. One time I was in, a, in my office. Uh, this is... 13 years ago, and a guy came and he started talking smack to everybody. And he said, you know, I'm 41 years old and I'm coaching, uh, uh, but what's the school that was across the street from Victoria and Balboa? Birmingham? Birmingham, Birmingham, Birmingham High School. He says, I can kick everybody's butt and sprinting and running and all this, and I'm dressed in suit. And I said, this guy's just starting to irritate me a lot. And he says, I'm faster than all of you. So I said, let's go step outside, I'll race you. He says, well, you got dress shoes. I said, I'm gonna do it on my socks. Now, this is a little bit crazy. I know people will say this is wild. So we go outside, and there's a bunch of people waiting. I said, let's go 100 yards. P pick a car. So it's like a, at this Victoria and Balboa office. I said, let's pick 100. So we mark the car. So let's race to that. No problem. So he's in his shorts. He just came from practice. Okay, It's like 10.30 at night, 10 o'clock at night. I take off my tie. I'm wearing dress shirts, dress pants. And I take off my shoes. I'm wearing black socks. I said, ready? Ready. So I said, guys, give us a signal. So it's one, two, three. We start racing. So we start racing, and I beat him, and I beat him pretty good. 
it was a pretty good race. And now I'm beating them and all of a sudden I'm looking back and I'm like, yeah, I beat, but I'm like, why are my feet so sticky? Well, I look down on my feet. My entire socks have been pulled back and my skin's been pulled back. There's foot marks on the ground of you know what, blood, literally. For a week and a half, I couldn't walk. Now, somebody could say this is what? They could say this is absolutely, you can call it foolish, crazy, whatever you want to call it. I would agree with you. I would say you're right. I wouldn't debate it. But that's the spirit of a competitor. You want to find out if you can do it better. You want to find out if you can, you know, improve something. And when there's a competitive environment, people come up with better ideas. You know, never combative because combative is something if the top allows that to happen, then that's the problem of the top. I'm not talking combative. I'm talking competitive. I'm talking competitive, not combative, but a competitive environment. Number four, humor. Use humor all the time. I love using humor uh, all the time. It, it, it loosens things up. If you look at, again, I said it earlier with the pranks part, but humor is different. I, you know, just look at how, how it is in the military. Why is it that anybody that goes in the military, if you ask him how it is, everybody thinks you're so serious, you're so this, you're so that. You're serious when it's, you know, wartime. You know, in sports, you're serious when it's, Playoff, four, we got to go win and make it happen. Of course, we've been practicing to win. And we got to win because you don't win, you ain't getting a championship. And why else are you playing the game? To do what? Should you say you're in the NBA? No. You're playing to win a championship, right? You're going to war to either win the war or create some kind of a peace treaty with the other enemy. But you're not going to war to die. You ain't playing a game to lose. You're playing to compete and win, right? To dominate. Now, now with that being said, with that being said, in the military, almost anybody I've met that's been in the Marines, Air Force, Army, Navy, whatever it is, you'll sense a certain level of humor, maybe a little bit of sarcasm, uh, very witty. Why? Because if you're in the military and if you don't have humor, sarcasm, and, and you're very sensitive, you're going to get crushed in the military. Same happens on sports teams. If you're on sports teams, you'll sense a lot of look at him, smack talking. If you're too sensitive, you're not going to be able to make it playing against a guy like Chris Paul or Gary Payton or Kobe or Jordan. They will demoralize you. But in sports, you got to play that game. There's humor. So there's a little bit of that going on in a culture that we created. Uh, and I think it gets everybody to be tougher, funner, and uh, it, just, it just makes for a better environment when there's humor being involved. Next one, five, music. I'm very big on music. I think music being played loosens people up, it energizes people. Um, you know, there was always great songs you can play throughout the day. I like music playing constantly, whether it's playing Don't Stop Believing by uh, 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 Journey or it's, uh, you know, uh, Josie's got, what was that one song I would always play? Josie's got a mission far away. Come around and talk it over. So many times I want to say, you know, you, I just want to lose your, I just want to lose your love tonight. I just want to, something like that. Anyways, we would play that all, the, or the one by Aerosmith, Dream On. Oh my God. Dr the other day we played Dream On here. I got emotional just listen to, because it fires you up. Every time we would have, like, let's just say a session was getting started, was about to start, we would like to play uh, the song, the theme song of the Chicago Bulls. Remember? And now, the star lineup for the Chicago Bulls. We would start it off like that. People are fired up. Right? It absolutely jacks you up. Music plays a very big role uh, in culture. Six, hire the right kind of people that fit the culture. It's very, very important. Do not try to force somebody who doesn't fit the culture in your culture. I'll tell you why. Because when you try to force that, it doesn't work out and everybody's uncomfortable. Everybody's uncomfortable. And generally, for us, uh, we'll interview somebody and sometimes the interview process will talk. And the last question, we'll bring somebody on board. Uh, or even in an office, we would bring in, you know, sales site. I would talk to them. How are you this? How are you that? How are you this? And you'll generally know somebody who fits the culture very well. And there are those that are coming and say, whoa, this is, I don't know if I can do this. You know, and they're very much liking to be a corporate absolute, like a way where you go to the job and no one talks to everybody. And we're kind of like robots. And that's not the culture I want to create. Not at all. So they don't fit the culture. So sometimes a person you may hire and they'll come into the culture, they'll get filtered out by themselves through the culture. Don't worry about that. You're not trying to retain everybody. You want to retain the type of people that fit the culture that you have. I was in France having breakfast at Angelino's with my wife. And we're sitting next to a couple. And anybody that always sits next to me, I like to talk to them. And I said, so uh, you guys speak very good English. Where are you from? He says, I'm from Chicago. So who do you work for? Coca-Cola. So I did like working for Coca-Cola. I've been with them for 14 years. So what does that mean to me? He said, we met in Coca-Cola, my wife and I. I said, so tell me about Coca-Cola. 
They went for 14 minutes. My house, I have everything in my house is Coca-Cola. This is Coca-Cola. That is Coca-Cola. They sold me on the culture of working for Coca-Cola. That fires me up because it tells me how great of a job Coca-Cola does to create an environment where two people who are in France, not working in France, they're just there to visit her relatives, are fired up to talk about Coca-Cola next to a couple other people who are there for vacation with a few friends. They're sharing that culture with them. There is something there, you know, when you hire the right type of people who stick around and fall in love with the brand. Uh, next one is uh, seven. Add your own personality to it. Let me explain to you what I mean by personality to it. Um, if you're into sports, use sports metaphors. If you're sports, show sports. If you're music, show it. If you're, you know, rock, show it. If you're, you know, somebody that likes uh, uh, Biggie, show it. If you're a Tupac guy, show it. If you're, you know, uh, 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 Taylor Swift, show it. If you're into motorcycles, show it. You like cars, show it. You're a Mustang 1964 and a half guy, show it. You're a Corvette 59 and a half, show it. You're a Lambo guy, Corvette guy, Porsche guy. It doesn't matter. Show you, whoever you are. You like politics, you like Aristotle, you like Socrates, you like, you know, Stoicism, you like, show it, right? Things that are you, show it. You're a Laker fan, Jets fan, Yankees fan, doesn't matter. Show the culture that you have. If you're a golf guy, you like certain movies, you're a Scarface person, you're a I don't know, you're a casino person, you're a you know, gladiator person, you're 300, you're about Braveheart, show it. It shows your scent of a woman person, your notebook person, whatever. Show the culture that you have and add your personality to it. You have nothing to be embarrassed of, of the way you are, that's who you are. Show the world. People want to know how you are because you're unique in your own way. Eight, uh, initiation process. We've always had initiation processes and I love initiating people. Uh, when we were at the Army unit, we had a lot of initiating process, but that one I can't share with you because that's more of a private initiation process. I'll share one day if we're, if we're at a, uh, a, a, a session together, I'll share that with you. But initiation process are very critical. Somebody would get a promotion, we'd get them in the office, and we say, listen, you are now a, a senior leader with our firm, so we need to make sure we initiate you. And what are you guys going to do? We would turn off the lights. Everybody would go further to the wall but everybody would be shouting at him and he would think we're about to jump him as if we're back in high school. And he would turn on the lights five seconds later. It was always funny to see them because you would see some that were like this thinking we're about to hit them. You would see some that are ready to fight. You would see some started them. And I go, we learned a lot about you. This one's a fighter, this great. You'd see ones covered up. You see one that just standing there not even know what's going on, right? It was great though. We had different types of things for initiation because I think, I think you got to do that to have fun with it uh, as, you're, uh, as you're creating your environment. Another one is monthly contests. Very exciting to have monthly contests. It doesn't matter what the monthly contests are. It could be anything. You know, we can have uh, as big of a monthly contest as going to Dubai or going to Tuscany, Italy or going to Caribbean or going to, you know, Aspen and staying at St. Regis as big as giving away a Ferrari or giving away a, a, a Corvette or giving away whatever. And it could be as small as giving a $100 gift card to Amazon. Doesn't matter. Every month, have a contest for something that people are fighting for. It's exciting to keep getting better and the hunt. People want to stay later to win. People spend time on weekends to improve certain things. It adds to the culture. Next, invest in them. I think, I think sometimes we don't invest into our people enough. I'm big on investing into people. I think we need to invest into people. Uh, it doesn't matter what it is. If somebody's doing accounting, what can they do to go to a course that's going to teach them to be better on accounting? If somebody is doing marketing, what can they do to get better at that? If somebody is doing you know, sales, what can we do to bring the best sales speaker? If someone wants to learn how to become more how-to salesman, I may bring a Tom Hopkins. If someone wants to be more audacious, I may bring a Grant Cardone. If somebody's, you notice your culture is not good at goal setting, you may bring a Brian Tracy. If you're, you know, you need vision, you may bring a Mark Cuban. If you're, you know, you need somebody that's talking about what it is to have the right manners, you may, if it's marriage, you may bring somebody. If it's, it doesn't matter. Bring something that's constant education to your field force it will always give the return on the investment you made for that speaker. What was that? That was the spray out. I thought it was like sprinkles going off. Um, okay, read together. I'm very big on reading together. I think it's very critical for people to be reading together. We do a monthly uh, book club every single month. I already run a book club called the Entrepreneur's Book Club. But every single month, for as long as we've been around, we read a book and everybody turns in a report and we read it together. For every single month, as long as we've been around, We've read a book together because it's something that I expect everybody to invest into themselves and improve. And if you get into the culture and if you don't like reading, you're going to be filtered out because it's just the culture that we have. We like people to improve. We were going through 
the interview process the other day and one of the people that made it to the last interview with me, she went through three different people before me and I sat down I said, I asked one question, I said, how much do you read? I said, I haven't read ever since I graduated college. I said, why not? I said, I have kids, I have this, I have that. I said, so have you read any business books? No. What do you read? I don't read. Well, that's a problem, you know, because we're big on reading. So you got to be willing to improve and constantly be working on yourself. Next, uh, uh, incentivize. Incentivize them for anything. That this is different than contests. It could be something very small that if you do this and if you notice somebody that's doing their part, you know, make them feel good by doing certain things on the side. Incentivize people to go out there and do something. You do this the best, we'll do this. You do that the best, you'll do this. If you do this, I'll do this. If you do that, we'll do this. There's always a you know, way of uh, uh, getting people to want to move and getting certain things going past uh, just certain contests. Next, celebrating birthdays together. Um, it's a small thing, but listen, it means a lot to people. Just today, I, it was one of my friend's birthday today, um, Erica Del Toro. You get some love on this video, Erica. Happy birthday to you. Um, her birthday, and so I sent a message to her. I told her exactly how I feel about it, and she said, you know, this is the most amazing message I got, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and we sing a certain way, you know? We have a certain thing that we do when we sing. It's different, our song has certain whistling to it, and everybody now sings that way. It's just, just how we sing, right? And, you know, we'll, we'll pick in an office, whatever office we are, and if it's one of the leader's birthday, chip in five bucks, get something small, bring a cake, surprise them, and try to find a way to do it where he or she expects it the least because no one was expecting it because the smart ones, you can't surprise them. So, you know, uh, birthdays are a very big thing to know that you know you're paying attention to their uh, personal lives as well. Next one is cards. I'm big on sending cards to folks. Uh, I think it, it shows uh, uh, that you take the additional time. Most people don't want to do that because it's like time for cards. Why would I want to send a card? Um, I would say we average 20 to 30,000 cards per year. I think last year was 27,000 cards. Something like that. I may be off by a few thousand, but that's the number that I get. Uh, 15, emotion, emotion, emotion. Let me explain what I mean by emotion, emotion, emotion. When somebody is not in a good place, when somebody is confused, when somebody, and we all gonna go through certain phases in our lives, you know, you ask, what do you want? Like, what is an ideal situation for you? What are you doing it for? Why are you here? Why'd you get excited about this? Tell me about the goals you have. And, and I could tell you what's Mario's dream car. I could tell you why, uh, uh, what's the uh, dream situation for, you know, what some of our people want to do. I could go through it because it's important to me because I want to know what things they want to do. I could tell you many of our leaders on what their goals were, what their car was, the house they want to get, the place they want to live, the place they want to travel. It's important because at the end of the day, a company excels and does very well when a lot of people's dreams within it become a reality as well. Now, you know, it's all based on contribution and value. It's not like, oh, you want this? I'll do this for you if you stick around. No, it's you do this, and if you do this, you have the possibility to earn X, Y, Z. So it's still a merit system that they got to go earn, but it's knowing what people want to do long-term with their lives as well. Another one is this. Next point, point number 16. Don't be too lopsided on one um, type of a, 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 a sex, like gender. Don't just be uh, an environment that's only male-driven or only female-driven, unless if that's your business. Let's just say your business is, you know, makeup. Okay, it's going to be probably female-driven, right? If your business is, uh, I don't know, whatever it is for certain things that men will do, it may be male-driven. But if it's not, if it's Disney, it can be both sexes. You know, if it's technology, it can be both sexes. If it's, if it's sales, it's both. For us, you know, we're 54% in our company, uh, uh, are filled with women. It's not men. It's 54% women, 46% men. So it's pretty much 50-50. But I like to ask both sides. You know, I like to ask ladies, hey, what do you think we can do with the company uh, on things that you want to see? And what men, what do you want to see? Because sometimes there may be a lot of competition on one side and the other side is there's no empathy and compassion and emotion. Hey, we need to go. And sometimes you may go way, way too much empathy, compassion and emotion and you have no competition. And so there's always a good balance, just like politics. Republicans can say you have to do this. And then if we go too far, this side, we're in trouble. And then, you know, Democrats may say we do this. And if we go too much, it's not like we are right now, we're in trouble. Generally, this is good to be right in the middle. So get feedback from both sides on what we can do to improve the company or the environment that you're creating. Next, point number 17, surprise your team. Surprise your team. Surprise your team. I mean, as much as you can, surprise your team. Uh, just last month, um, you know, I was so proud of our guys, what they did. I brought several masseuses to the office. 
surprised everyone, put a massage bed in an office, and everyone went and got a massage for themselves, and they came out like they were in heaven. You know the look on your face when you come out of massage, it looks like you just got done. It looks good when you just got done getting a massage. You know what I'm talking about? That look is like, man, I am so relieved. They were so happy when they got the massage. Surprise, guys, today we're going to go watch a movie. Let's go watch a movie. Hey, guys, today we're going to go grab something to eat. Let's go grab something to eat. You know, we're going to go to this place. You know, uh, just uh, uh, six weeks ago, seven weeks ago, we figured out what the best cars that our, you know, top leaders liked, and I decided to surprise them and put blindfold. The video is going to come out here next week or two. I'll put it, I'll share it with Valley Timon as well. You know, put a blindfold on them and walk them all the way through in Vegas with hundreds of people around, and I rent you know, we got, what is it, uh, um, uh, uh, nine uh, uh, cars? Was it nine cars? We got two McLarens. We got a Lambo. We got a Ferrari. Two, we got two Ferraris, a Ferrari California, Ferrari 458, a Rolls Royce Ghost, Ghost. We got a Bentley. I'm missing one, an Aston Martin DB9 convertible. We got all this, and they're standing right in front of it, and someone's revving the car. And you see them shaking. It was unbelievable reaction, right? They opened it. Oh, man. Then we went and had dinner at Del Frisco's in James Bond room, and you know, saw the presentations of how the wine bottle opens up in Las Vegas. You should see this. It's a million dollar uh, a wine, uh, uh, what do you call it? It's, it's not a cellar. It's like a wine. Uh, what would you call that, Mario? That thing that opens up with wine bottles? It was something called James Bond. It's a million bucks. James Bond room. At the James Bond room. Something like that. Anyways, it's just beautiful. And we had dinner. You know, everybody's there. We're having a great time. Everyone, everybody was surprised. And uh, it adds to it. You know, in, in Dubai, we were in Dubai six months ago. We decided to rent a yacht. You know, and in the yacht, we decided to have a yacht party and just do lamb chops and steak and food and dinner and jumping off the yacht at 128 degree temperature in Dubai to surprise the guys. We just had a phenomenal time. We had a great time together. These are memories we're going to have for the rest of our lives, but it's bonding. It's relationship. It's fun. What other way are you going to do it in life anyways? Just be, you know, to yourself and extremely serious all the time and you die and what happens? You die alone in a cemetery. You're going to be alone for the rest of your life stuck in a, is that what you, no, it's enjoying the whole purpose of what you're doing anyways. Uh, with, uh, with the environment you're creating. Next, get to know your people. I think a lot of times um, there is this CEO and you are uh, 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 someone else and listen, you can't get too close to me or we can't do all this other stuff. No, the reason why there's not time to get close is maybe there just isn't time, but there isn't a uh, uh, I am better than you because I have this title, right? I am better than you because I have this position. It means nothing. It means nothing. It means nothing. Let me tell you, you know, position, you can call yourself any positions you want. If somebody else doesn't see you as a CEO, you're not a CEO. You can say you're a CEO. It doesn't matter. Nobody else sees you as a CEO. It's, it's treatment of people. So what we did a few months back is we went and bought an RV. We wrapped the RV, and we decided to come up with something called the Startup Entrepreneur Tour. I lived in the RV for 30 days with six of us. Mario was one of them, Okay. Six of us, it was me, you, Maral, Tikran, Paul, and Alex, right? Yep. And we went from LA to Arizona, New Mexico, Dallas, Austin, San Antonio, New Orleans, uh, um, Jacksonville, Miami. Uh, we went Atlanta, Chicago, Toronto, New York, I don't know what else, and all the way around. We went everywhere, right? Canada. Canada spoke at 16 different cities, Reading, San Diego, Van Nuys, all these other places that we went to. And then we came back, and we met everybody. We shook everyone's hands. Now, my, my anniversary was on the tour, June 26th. So I'm on the tour, and it's my anniversary. Not typical, oh, my gosh, you can't do this. You know, my wife and I, we pretty much celebrate every, every single week to us as anniversary because we don't wait for a day to dictate we're having an anniversary. So I flew in my uh, wife and my son, and they went with us with the RV. And, you know, my kid is with me. He's sleeping with me in the bed. We had a great time. It was phenomenal. But we had a chance to shake everyone's hands. We had a chance to go to everybody and say, hey, what do you got going on? What's going on? Talk to people. Here's ideas. Here's... We had a blast, and we connected with everyone because the, the business is a business uh, built by a lot of different people, and it takes time and resources and energy. If you sit in a corner and just hide from everybody all the time, eventually people are going to say, man, I don't even know you. How do I, if I don't know you, how do I like you? How, how do, you, how do you, you know, capture my heart if I don't know you? Oh, it takes a lot of energy. It takes a lot of energy that you got to put into it. This isn't something that happens overnight. 
Um, next, next thing I'll talk about, turn you guys into heroes. You know, you gotta, you gotta make sure your, uh, uh, the top performers, people are uh, uh, felt like they're, they're, they're above and beyond everybody else. You know, uh, um, I love what, what a professor from Cornell University said. He said, uh, uh, pump up the collective, but make sure you don't forget the individual, right? Pump up the collective, but recognize the individual because the individual is someone that is putting maybe twice as effort everybody else. And there are cases where people put twice as much as effort everybody else. They are more valuable on a team. There is people that are more valuable on the team. You could be fair with everybody, but you can't treat everybody equally. There are people that are doing above and beyond, and they need to know that they're being treated you know, above and beyond everybody else because of their effort that's putting in. Where someone wants to go home, they can't, it's 5 o'clock, I'm going home. Boom, 4.59, they're out. And this other guy's staying till 8.30, and you don't notice that? You don't recognize that? Yeah, you, you got to make sure you recognize what people are putting the efforts in and turn them into heroes. Allow for crazy things to happen, okay? Crazy ideas. Uh, one time, I said, listen, before I die, guys, how about we go out and bro break a Guinness Book of World Record? How do we do that? I have no idea. But let's decide if we can break a Guinness Book of World Record. Well, we called Guinness Book of World Record, Guinness World Record, and we wanted to break a record. And we decided to break the record for the most, uh, what is it, most... Uh, Checkers players, which they call it uh, droughts. Is that what they call it? Droughts? Yeah, how do you, how do you yeah. pronounce that? Droughts. Droughts? Droughts? Yep. Most droughts, right? So we, they had to fly somebody in. They had to lock the door. It was a whole technical thing that you had to do. And I think it was like $30,000 to do it all legally. I mean, it was very, very intense. And we were in Reno, and we broke the world record for the most checkers players in one room. And, uh, uh, you know, you know, it was great about it. NBC came, all the news stations came, the congressman came, the mayor came, everybody came. And, you know, many people left with a world record. This is a Guinness Book of World Record that we broke. It was on national television. They shared the video. It went bonkers when they shared it on their uh, Facebook page. I don't know how many fans they have on their Facebook page. I do know it's a lot of people, hundreds of hundreds thousands, of thousands uh, that they shared. Mario, I don't want to throw this to you. Uh, but so we did that. Another thing we did is we did a flash mob in front of Planet Hollywood. And the way we did it was hilarious. We set it up where we created a video with the choreographer. Video was sent to everywhere. Everybody was practicing the dance in front of Planet Hollywood. We decided to stop in the middle of everything and act as if somebody was flirting with one of our guy's girlfriend at that time. So everybody thought a fight's about to break out. So everybody shows up to see what's going on. And then they took on, put on their shirts, PHP. And they did a flash mob to, uh, uh, what was the song at that time that was a big hit? Uh, uh, Gangnam, Style. Gangnam Style. by Psy, right? Gangnam yeah. Style. It was, uh, I think I had 150,000 views on uh, YouTube. Um, another one is the Nene -Nay dance uh, that uh, our buddy John did. John tends to do a lot of this stuff with the dance. Yeah, was, we had the Candy and them that did what? They did uh, one of the song was, uh, 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 Ritz what was the name of the song? Called the it's called the Ritz Carlton. Yeah. I mean, that, that thing got... got I don't know how many millions of people watched that one. The, 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 he ran off on the floor twice. Yeah, he ran off. It was hilarious, <laughs> right? It was on Instagram. It did very well. It went viral on Instagram. Uh, my buddy, you know, here's one that we did. We did a video of, like, Olympics, and here's uh, 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 George drinking a, uh, what, he drank what? He drank eggs, yeah. and Gaetan, you see him spaghetti. eating spaghetti. It's just messy. Fun fact that we created that video. We have one here with Jose is, is acting like he's, uh, who is he in this video? He is, um, uh, what's the guy's name? Uh, 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 the, the Rico Suave, right? Rico Suave, he's impersonating Rico Suave. But look, allow for crazy things, allow for crazy things to happen uh, for the culture because it makes people wanna work for that environment. It makes people wanna take it to a whole different level. It makes people wanna have fun. It makes people wanna, you know, it just takes it to a whole different level. Look, sometimes we forget that you're going to spend more time with people you work with than your own family at times, especially if you're building a startup and you're building your own business. Why not have fun with the people you're working with? Why have to be so serious? Why not be able to create an environment of very high standards and expectation for people to perform a very competitive environment combined with a fun, loose, prank type of an environment where you're laughing yourself to the top? That's kind of fun to do, isn't it? You live longer, you have more fun, you make good relationships, you make great memories, and when your time comes to lay down and say, you know, I've, I've done my part in the world, you're going to, you know, uh, leave this planet with a lot of great memories that you had that you built in business as well. Uh, accountability. Everyone's got to be held accountable. This is point number 21. Everyone's got to be held accountable. The, the part of accountability process is 
everyone's got to pull their weight. Everybody does. And a part of accountability to me is call out. So you can put this point as accountability slash call out. I've always been a fan of everybody being able to call out everybody. Call out everybody. Uh, I don't want to wait. For instance, I have two sons, right? Let's just say these kids are now 16 and 14 years old. Then I have a daughter uh, who's going to be born in a couple months, and she's going to be 16, 14, 12 years old, hypothetically. I don't want them to come to me every single time and call out and say, he did this, did you see this, he did this, he did that. No, you call him out. Why don't you call him out what he did? I saw him in school doing this. Why don't you call him out and pull him aside and tell him he's not doing, he's not doing the right thing? Oh, Dad, I was going to tell you. It's okay, you tell me, but why are you waiting on me? Call him out. So the work environment, if somebody is off, call them out. We have a pure call-out environment where permission is given from the top for anybody to call out everybody. Why is that so critical? Because, one, everyone is forced, not necessarily forced, you're put in a position to start leading even though you don't have a leadership position yet because you realize sometimes somebody is a leader that no one knows about. You never knew that person was a leader. It's like the Golden State Warriors. You know how people say, you know, Curry is the MVP of the league? but Draymond Green is the MVP of Golden State Warriors. No one knows who Draymond Green is, but now people do because he's the modern-day Oscar Robertson who's a leader in the locker room. He calls everybody out. Now imagine you take Draymond Green out. You think they're going to win a championship last year? No way in the world. There's no way in the world they're going to win a championship. No way in the world because it's a call-out environment. I go to some offices and businesses, and I sit there. I'm like, this, I cannot even stay here for another second. Everybody is, I was invited to go to a place and speak. I couldn't wait to leave. Couldn't wait to leave because everybody was sensitive. Oh, we don't say things like that here. Really? Oh, my gosh. Please send me home already. Send me home already. I mean, everybody's lying to everybody. Is that kind of an environment you want for business? It doesn't work. It's not effective. you got to call them out. If that person's not doing their part, call them out. Pull your weight. You are not pulling your weight. It's affecting everybody's job. So... This isn't just about fun and, you know, hokey and pranks and humor and all this other stuff. There's a business side. you got to perform. Someone's not doing their part. you got to pull them aside and say, hey, man, what's up with this? What's been up with your attitude lately? I don't like your behavior lately, man. You're kind of affecting everybody else's mood. The other day you got upset and you snapped at the other guy. He didn't do anything to you. Why'd you snap at him? Yo, oh, man, you just don't know what's happening at home. Bro, you want to go for a walk? Let's go for a walk. Tell me about what's going on. I'm like, you know, me and my girl, man, we're going to... That's fine, bro. i got problems as well with my girl. I'm going through this with my kid, but we can't bring that in the workplace. So these are the types of environments that you got to allow people to call each other out. Next, high standards. I'm a big fan of high standards. I'm not a fan of low standards. Um, you know, uh, uh, just uh, yesterday, Entrepreneur put up a video. Uh, uh, the video was what? The video was uh, it's time for millennials to take vacations because they have too much pressure of not taking vacations. Look, I mean, I've traveled so many places in the world, I don't even know where I've gone. I've just... You name a place, I've gone to it. Anywhere, you name it. I've gone, I've gone a lot of different, I've had the privilege of going to a lot of different places. But I bust my behind. I work hard. And I, I am not a fan of low standards. I'm not a fan of, there's a, it's a lot easier thing to sell for someone to say, oh, poor you, you work too hard, honey, come home. This is too much, it's not good. This younger generation, capitalism's making them work so hard. This is not good for your spirit, honey, come home. I'm sorry, that's a low standard conversation. That's a low standard conversation. I like high standards. Um, I guarantee you nothing great ever happened with low standards. I guarantee you no team ever won a championship with low standards. I guarantee you no one ever won a gold medal with low standards. I guarantee you no one ever won a World Cup with low standards. I guarantee you no one ever ran a $100 billion company with low standards. I guarantee you no one ever became a president or prime minister of a country on low standards. I guarantee you, no one won Mr. Olympia on low standards. Nobody. It's high standards. No one does. High standards is what it's at. Now, you can disagree with it, and you don't have to agree with it. There's a lot of people that don't like it when I talk about high standards, but I believe in high standards. I go to restaurants sometimes or businesses sometimes. It drives me insane when I see a business ran on low standards. I get up and walk out. Literally, my wife will tell you, my friends will tell you, if I go to a restaurant and I see something, I'm like, no, can we get out of here? We get up and walk out. Absolutely get up and walk out. Went to a sushi spot the other day in Plano. I'm looking for some great sushi spots in Plano, Dallas. Uh, and I went to this place, and uh, my dad was in town. I took him there because we both like sushi. And we sat there, and I ate the sushi. I was honestly, I was mesmerized. I was in love. I was in heaven. I was in heaven where 
You know, everybody in heaven eats sushi. And you know what kind of sushi? I'm talking like fatty tuna sushi, the real salmon sashimi, and ikura, real, real sushi is what I'm talking I'm not talking about no California. I'm talking real ikura, salmon sashimi, yellowtail, white tuna, albacore type of sushi. And I'm sitting there, this man's making it for me, and I'm like, man, this, this guy's on top of it. He's bringing the salmon, it's flawless. Dip it in this one, you don't put sauce in it, just eat it the way it is. And they knew what they were doing. Look around, clean, 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 everything's clean, right? And I said, man, this place deserves a 30% tip. You know, when I go to places like that, they deserve, they deserve a big tip. We should, we should announce who the place is. We should say the name of the place uh, uh, on what it's called, Sushi. Yokohama, Yokohama Sushi. Can we put a logo of uh, Sushi Yokohama up there and give them some love? If you ever share this video, you go to that place as well, let them make, make sure they see this video. Just phenomenal. And I asked the guy, who's the owner of this place? I'm asking my waiter, who's the owner of the place? The man making the sushi for me is the owner of the place. That's who ran the place. No wonder the guy, the place is ran on high standards. When the owner's at nine o'clock at night making sushi for people on a Friday night, on a Friday night instead of being with his family. That's high standards to me. That's a place I will be loyal to. That's a place I'll give my money to. That's a place I'll give my time to. Next is sending gifts. I think you got to send gifts to people and gifts that mean a lot to that person. Um, you know, I'm not just talking about black and white gifts. You know, if somebody has a kid, kid, send them a book on parenting. If somebody has their first kid, somebody becomes a daddy for the first time, you send them a shirt that says first time daddy, rookie daddy, you know, rookie, you know, whatever it is. There's, there's so many ways to, to have fun with the gift side. You don't need to spend $500 on gifts, although sometimes that may be a way to do it as well. You know, we had one of our uh, girls work so hard, two of them work so hard that, you know, I just decided to take it to a whole different level. They didn't know this was not part of a recognition or anything. It was just a gift I sent them. One of them, I sent them to the most incredible spa in Chicago, and uh, they had a good time. Another one, I sent them to one of the most incredible spas in uh, uh, Beverly Hills, Montage. You know, if you're in Beverly Hills, you know that area. And they had a great time. It was nothing. There's a few guys that did very good, and out of nowhere, they got Ferrari watches sent to them. There's some guys that, they, I just think you need to, you need to gift people um, sometimes with or without a reason to just gift them, okay? Next, with, with dress code, have fun with the dress code. This point number 24, Funky Friday. You know, you don't have to wait for Halloween to dress up. We like to dress up all the time. I'm, I'm talking dressing up like uh, we've done great Gatsby themes, right? We'll do... I don't know, uh, 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 PHP to the future, yeah, we did a theme, you know, you can probably see a clip here, I'm dressed like uh, the Doc, right, I'm, I'm dressed as Doc, uh, and then, yeah, that we did another one that's Slash, and John Mason and I, John was who, Axel, John's Axel, and I'm, I'm Slash, and he's Axel, you know, we've done Gatsby, where we're dressing up, we've done so many different things that adds just a fun component to it, to it, right, now, again, some of these things you may watch and you may say, I completely disagree. It's completely fine. My suggestion to you is create an environment where people want to belong to and they make a decision to plant their flag to want to be in business with you uh, forever. I love what Richard Branson once said. Richard Branson said, teach everybody your secrets so they can leave and be your competitor, but treat them so well so they don't want to. Let me say it one more time. Teach everybody your secrets and, and concepts on what you do so they can go out and be your competitor, but treat them so well that they don't want to. Give them such a great opportunity that they don't want to. And that's retention because vision and uh, uh, a culture combined together creates for an incredible winning environment. People ask, so what books do you recommend? There's two books I would recommend uh, for culture is what I would recommend, two books. I gotta teach you how to throw books, man. The middle of the video, you send me a book like this. This is a serious video. Culture, so I, threw it. I understand it, but I'm doing a video. You send it like that in the middle of the video. Fish. Fish is a great book. If you haven't read Fish, it's a phenomenal book. Phenomenal book. It's simple. I think it's like 80 pages or something like this. Let me see how many pages it is. It's like a, a 99 page pages on like big font. This is another one that's phenomenal by Tony Shea. This is a must read by our buddy Tony Shea. We went and got a private tour of Zappos in Vegas. It's phenomenal. I highly recommend uh, this book. Tony's a stud with the way he explains uh, culture and he takes it to a whole different level when you read uh, uh, that book. So here's what I wanna, here's what I wanna do. I wanna know if you're the very serious type all around the world, wherever you are, if you're very serious or if you're loose. So here's a contest for you. This is what we'll do. 
I want you to take the most creative picture yourself, the most creative picture yourself, and watch in Valuetainment. So whatever the creative picture is, you watch in Valuetainment. It's, there's got to be a picture of Valuetainment. There's got to be a picture with you in it, and it's got to be creative. The most creative picture of Valuetainment you take, and either you share it on Facebook with hashtag Patrick by David, or you take the picture and post it on Instagram with hashtag Patrick by David and hashtag Valuetainment. We'll take the best picture that's put on Instagram with hashtag Patrick by David and hashtag Valuetainment. And uh, the, the, the two most creative pictures, we will send you a copy of 25 Laws for Doing the Impossible signed by me. This is a book I wrote myself, 25 Laws for Doing the Impossible. But I want to see how much culture you got. How creative are you? Are you just a person who's very square and everything's got to be very, you know, uh, uh, perfectly done? Or are you willing to loosen up a little bit and have some fun? So take the picture with you watching Value Taming, uh, an episode of it, and then be creative. Put it on Instagram. We'll uh, put the hashtag Patrick Bay David. Uh, Ilya, let's make sure we put the hashtag Patrick Bay David and Value Taming here. And then from there, we'll reach out to you and private message you and tell you, hey, great pick. Send us your address. We're going to send you a license. Uh, 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 signed book of doing the impossible. With that being said, if you got any questions, if you got any questions about what I just talked about here, any questions about what I just talked about here, uh, comment on the bottom. If you like what I just talked about on a PDF, go to my website, patrickbaydavid.com. If you want this in PDF, uh, go to my website, patrickbaydavid.com. There should be one link on the bottom. Or if you're watching this already on my website, the PDF should be on the bottom. Keep going to the bottom. You'll see a PDF on the bottom for uh, you to subscribe to my weekly newsletter. If you subscribe to the newsletter, you will get the PDF sent to you right off the bat so you can just have this and go out there and uh, look at it within your business to see how closely you run your culture and the way we just talked about right now. With that being said, thanks for watching, everybody. Take care. Bye-bye.